Hello and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for looking in. Well today, unfortunately, I've not had a chance to get on with any Triang repairs. Um, so we're going to do something a little bit different. It's a beautiful day outside and I've been tidying because I've got a bit more time with the lockdown and I've just come across this. Uh, I can't identify exactly what make it is yet. I'm wondering if it's a lister but hopefully we'll find a plate on it. Um, it's definitely been in here for between 20 and 30 years. It's just had building materials deposited around and on top of it. Um, and I think we're going to get this out and see if we can get it going. So, I need to go and get a little bit of assistance to just uh, get this out and we'll get it into the sunlight and see what we're up against. So, I'll be back with you shortly. Well, welcome back out here. It's a little bit windy, so I don't know whether that's going to play up with the sound. I've um, got my son to help me move this. It's the longest he's spent outside for a day or two, but he's unfortunately back on his computer game. Now, what have we got? Um, a little bit of a walk round. I did just give this a quick rub, and we've got a plate here. Dealer plate, Cooper, Newport Pagnell. Underneath Rushton and Hornsby, size two. Yeah, and then class PT. So size two. Maybe that's two horsepower. Uh, PT petrol. There's a number there. Made in England. So indeed, Lincoln. We haven't got a list of them. We've got a Rushton and Hornsby. Now, uh, very great amounts of surface rust but that shouldn't be a problem so can't undo the fuel tank yet and the top we we'll to be very careful with all these fittings if we break anything chances are we won't find another not easily anyway so fuel tap yeah that's pretty seized now I have found here's the handle That's engaged and it spins with absolutely no compression. So that's going to be interesting. We'll have to look at that. And what else have we got? We've got carburetor, flake chamber, or it could be a flake chamber, some sort of. Sorry about the shadow here. Throttle and choke all in one, I think. Magneto, nice little Bakelite switch there. Can you see that? Just have a look. Stop, run, stop. And then I presume that's the points cover. Well, I think before we worry about the compression, we'll probably worry about a spark because an old friend of mine who used to work on petrol paraffin engines and all types of old things, he said to me, if you're looking to start one of these and you haven't got a good enough spark, you're better off just sitting in your house than trying to spend all day turning it over, I suppose. Anyway, it's all complete. Plugs there. I would imagine that it ran when it was put away, unless it failed. I mean, the only thing is we do not have compression. I imagine that a valve stuck somewhere, inlet or exhaust, probably just stuck open. It's going to be the culprit. We'll check. I'm sure it's got some ancient lubricant in it. There's some sort of an orifice there. Now, I have absolutely no knowledge of this engine what it was used for. I mean obviously some sort of stationary driver little piece of equipment or something. I do notice that someone seems to have made a little wooden addition to the flywheel. Flintstone pulley there. 
it is really not round. But then I guess, I, I suppose if a bell could stay on it, it did something. So I just wonder if there's a, yep, yeah, well, just under there, when I point to that nut, that could be a cover over the valves. Now, that exhaust pipe is pretty much in. We're not going to meddle with that. But I, coming round to this side, carburetor's only held on with a couple of bolts. One there, one there. So I think, I think we're going to take the carburetor off. Take that cover off. See if we can see any valve action and investigate this magneto. Now, I haven't got any help to make this today, so what I will do is I'll probably get my tripod, set the camera up wherever I'm working, and, uh, and we'll see where we go. I think there's a fair chance we'll get some sort of action. If not, we've spent a nice bit of time outside in the sun anyway. Right, well, I'll be back shortly. I'll round up some tools, maybe uh, a small glass of beer to help the job on, and uh, we'll see what we can find. I'll see you shortly. Right, hello again, here we are back at the engine. Wind's blowing my stuff about. Right, what are we going to do first? Well, probably a bit of a easing oil here and there. Right, let's start some investigating. Okie dokie. Right. First thing I think, we'll probably have a go at this fuel line. Yep, i just got to be careful with any of these. release from there. Now this might be a small sediment catcher in there. So let's just get this pipe off the other end at the carp. Looks freeing off quite nicely. I'm just Yeah, that's pretty blocked. Some debris in there, I don't know whether you can see that coming out. Let's just give it a bit of compressed air. We'll give that a proper clean later. Right, put that there. Now let's see whether this is indeed a... There might be a gauze or something in here. You can see there's a... Oh yeah, not too bad. Okay, pop that to the side. Right, let's just have a look at this tap. I want to be very careful with this. Just give that a little drop more easing fluid. What I might do is see whether this is could be a gland. I'll just loosen that a little bit. Yeah. yeah, that's very tight. Not an ounce of movement there, we'll just leave that. See whether the oil helps at all. 
So let's have a look at this spark plug. HT cap, that's come off there. Just uh, see if it'll loosen. Just put this mole wrench on. Well, not too tight at all. Doesn't seem to me like it's got a compressible washer on it. Perhaps lost years ago. Well, I don't know whether you can see that. Let's see if I can bring it up to the camera. That's an interesting plug. Two earth electrodes on that. And very crowded. Put that to one side. Let's see whether this carburetor will now come off. Okay, that first bolt is loosening nicely. Let's try the underneath one. Yep, absolutely no trouble. And look at that, it's falling away. So chances are, if there's a gasket behind there, it's going to be okay. Let's just look at that. Right, one bolt. Just get my spanner. Oh. Amazing how all these things just come apart so nicely, even after these years of. Yeah. Wow. That looks like some sort of crankcase ventilation. Fumes from the crankcase probably go through that. I don't know whether you can see. Let me just try and get that in the camera. Looks like some sort of a filter there. So it's burning the fumes from the crankcase. And there's the orifice with the jet inside. Well, we'll put that to one side for now and see what's behind this valve cover. Right, let's have a look. Hopefully we can take this off without having to remove the magneto. Let's just hope the timing is all right. I'm sure if it's... Let's just give that a clean. So... What I'm hoping is behind here we might see the valve gear, or part of it. I mustn't make a mess outside in the garden or be in trouble with Mrs Snooze. Let's have a look. So far it's coming apart beautifully. Now what have we got in there? Excuse me, I shall go round to this side. Let's have a look. Right, now in there. It's very difficult, but uh, we've got the two valves. Oh yeah, and indeed one is stuck fully open. Right, let's see if I can get the camera in there a bit to show you all what's going on. Just excuse me a fraction while I try and line you up. My bright sunlight doesn't help, but uh, let's just see if we can zoom in fractionally. Okay. 
Okay. Well, that stud, unfortunately, is obscuring the stuck valve. And I, if I turn it over, I don't know. You can see the camshafts, the tappets are rising up and down. And that one that's just risen up, the valve above it is stuck. I think because it's so stuck, well, let's put some more easing oil in. Let that do its work. Okay. Maybe we'll move on to the magneto. Come back to that compression in a bit. Let's see whether we can get the top off the mag. One screw. It's difficult to see the screws. So, so far, just concerned about the stuck valve, and it is very stuck. But these things, all oh, right, here we go. A little bit of corrosion in the mag. Oops, Let's put those screws safe. Signs of historic cleaning. Back to that. Okay. Well, who knows what condition that coil's in, or well, that condenser for that matter. Right, let's see if we can get to the points. Yes, there they are. Wow, look at that. There's some corrosion in there. Let's just turn it over. And they're opening and shutting. Not much of a gap. Right. Well, without upsetting the adjustment, I think we'll take a little split pin out. Let's just hope it's got a couple of bends left in it. Let's see whether I can ease that split pin out. Lovely. Don't want to lose that. So we've then got a metal washer. A fibre washer. Let's put those safe. I'm getting a bit of oiling out. And then that's uh, have a look. Now these are pretty corroded up these points. They sort of grow a fur on them funnily enough. Uh, insulator, we mustn't lose that. Okay. They haven't got a set of these in Halfords. It's the smallest mountain. So that should slide off. Damage this. As well, Let's see if I can get this in camera. Where are we? Here's the contact face there, which is pretty much green and messed up. Right, I'm going to clean this off camera. I've got some uh, 
how I run this paper is the, the little square I've cut here. Oh, I'll leave the camera running. A bit boring, perhaps, but see how we go. What I'm going to do first before I use the paper is just see if I can scrape the worst. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of huge thick coating of greeny corrosion. I don't exactly know what metal these points, it must be some sort of hard metal that they're coated in. But it really does always seem to attract this type of corrosion. Yeah, the points actually look in quite good condition once this corrosion is removed, which is interesting. It's not pitted. Oh, it's wind blowing my bit of paper away. Another bit round here. Yep, yeah, there we go. Okay, I'll just give this a hold me off camera just bring up a little bit of a buffer. Main thing is after cleaning them with the paper is to make sure there's absolutely no dust or carbon dump or whatever it is. Yeah, it's starting to look good. I don't know whether I can just show you that after the first attempt. I'll just give it another little Okay, well that's the moving, the moving one done. Now, I don't really want to take the other one out because it's got the adjustment and I'm trying to leave as much of this original as possible. Certainly looks nice and clean. Obviously, getting the spark is a major barrier to whether we're going to carry on with this today. So, let's uh, just see whether we can clean the fix one up in situ. It's gonna it's just powdering off here. Horrible. Right. Uh, we're going to persevere. Like I say, we're just going to see what we can do today. This is not a full restoration, this is just a bit of a sort of like an emergency recommission. do now is just get some emery paper, wrap it around the end of my screwdriver. I just show you that immediately. You can see how it's gone white. That's the coating coming off the point. And I can see just 
the face and is very corroded. I'm just oscillating this around. Have a look. Starting to look a bit cleaner. Let's just get my finger in there. coating on that. So you can see now I'm cleaning these points. Movement next to me. Inspection being carried out by a senior member of the family. Right, that is starting to clean. Did you like my engine? There's a Oh, well, it's uh, just a stationary engine for driving little work tools, perhaps a saw bench or I don't know, anything really. Is that a vacuum cleaner? Uh, possibly not. Right. I think one more clean of that and we'll be ready for a test. Very fiddly. It's funny how one contact is in very good condition. Makes you wonder whether it's been clean like this in the past. Because this one is actually a little bit pitted. Right, I think we're going to put that back together now. Just see if there's any chance of a spark. Just remove any dust. Let's reassemble. On. I haven't put the split pin back in yet. Just put this on. Let's see where we are. Now an easy way to test for a spark is just to clean that there. A little bit of surface corrosion. And then we can hold the screwdriver and crank it over. Out here. I think what I'm going to do is put this cap back on. It's a 
small bit of corrosion inside the cap today. There we go. Silly, silly. Right, that's one. And there's the other gun. No, oh, first error. Give this a clean. You know, I don't really want to do too much to that spark plug. That is in a very precarious state. Just, I'm going to touch the insulator. Just, just take a little. Just clean off that bit of Let's just fit the ignition lead to the spark plug. Now one of those is a little bit nearer than the other, so I think I'll close up the, the second electrode just to match the first. a spark but it's not very strong but it's there and I just heard a click then yes bingo it's freed off and I 
think we're in business. Let's have a look. Oh! Yeah. So we've now got compression and a spark of some description. Now I'm just going to pause the camera and look for the little screw I've lost and also just go and clean up my hands slightly and then we'll move on to the fuel system. Right, here we are, just had a little bit of a wash. Uh, so we seem to have got a bit of a spark. Got some compression. If we put the plug back in, just trying to measure for induction there and lift the plug out. It's a bit silly, wasn't it? Right, let's try again. Yeah, got some induction. Not the hugest amount of compression, but oh, well, better than nothing. Okay, so here's where we are. We've got valve freed off, a little bit of spark. And I've got some fuel. Just have a little sip. Mm, lovely. Here comes a dog. Dylan! Come here. Come here. Good boy. Right. Well, now we've got a helper. Ah, there he is. Ah. Right. Now we've got a helper. Let's just have a little look now. Don't cry. Just sometimes a little bit of tappiness here and there. Let's see. Oh, movement. Yeah, a little bit of movement there now. Just ease that. Okay, now let's have a look. This top is a bit skewed. Ah. Oh, oh, right. Well, that just lifts out. That's. Uh, Right, so I think what we'll do now is see whether anything comes through. Let's put a little drop. Just in. Just a small amount in the tank. There small amount of petrol. I found my lost magneto bolt screw using a pair of these fantastic strong magnets. Excellent for looking for. Oh, you might be able to see that. Yep. Good. Let's now put the bottom back in the tap. So it looks like we have now got fuel. Just be careful. Yeah. Right, so what we'll do now, with this fuel pipe, a little bit of a, a wash through. There was a, there's obviously been some water or something in there. Okay. Let's just put a drop more fuel in there. Too much. Right. So, let's just have a look. Oh, yeah, not bad. So, we've got fuel 
Okay, I think we'll put the... Let me just put the... The cover back on the... Let's just move that there a minute. Let's just get this timing cover back on. Now before we do anything else, I think we ought to see whether there's any ancient lubricant in the engine on anticipation of a fire up so before we do let's just get this gasket lined up just excuse my self being in the way of the camera there in and then we'll adjust the position of the gas. One, two. I honestly don't think there's going to be much oil around there. Just a little splash, right. Okay. Let's just nip that up a little bit. Nothing too much. Put the spark plug back in. Now, as I said before, there's no seal on that, but I'll just nip it up. So there we go. Put that into the stop position. I think I'll leave that off just for a minute. Right, let's put the let's put the little washer back on the points. There we go. Little split pin. Points cover. Right, next thing's carburetor. So let's just see what we've got here. We've got a big piece of cast iron. Now I imagine that there's that is pretty blocked up in the bottom of that float chamber. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> Dear, oh dear, there's the needle valve. Yeah, we've certainly got some, I don't know whether you can see that in there. Varnish of the ages. Okay, well, this is all, just give the float a little wash. This is all a little bit of a shame. That's the little needle valve. It's a float valve. And then we've got a filter screen there. Just not too bad. Right, so what to do with this? Well, I suppose first of all, we'll give it a little bit of a... Uh, let's just give it a bit of a... See what we can free off. Wow, that is. Let's look at this. Look at this. Oh, yeah, there's some debris in there. It's like it's a cast iron float chamber, which actually looks like it's been full of water. Uh, 
That is very unpleasant. Really going to have to be properly done at some point. But right now, we're only going to try and see if we can just get something to happen. So. Now I assume There's a couple of little tabs in there that are corroded up. Just that one's moving, obviously to allow the float to move up and down. I think what we'll do is have a little bit of a... Let's just put some in and see whether anything comes out of the bottom where the... That's totally blocked where the fuel goes in. Okay, you're gonna have to just let me leave you for a second while I go and get something to poke. Just a small piece of wire, so I'm just gonna just gonna pause the camera. Okay, just been into the workshop and had a change of heart, so I've procured a drinking straw, placing it over the jet. I'm getting plenty of bubbles. Now the sun is definitely going over the top of the house, so now or never, as they say. So in goes the jet bung. Now, Let's think about a common sense way of starting this engine. Because of course it is going to start. So, I'm going to put that back on there. Now I did say earlier, I'll check the oil. Now we don't want to seize it up. So, I'm just going to quickly go around to this back. There's a, a big wing nut here. Have a look, some sort of device totally caked in rubbish and it has release. Let's just remove the wing nut. Oops, there's a washer. Okay, well, I can confirm there is some lubricant in there. Very ancient by the smell of it, but uh, certainly enough for test purposes. So we've got oil in there. Right, well, let's just have a think. Oh, let's Right, here goes nothing. Now I haven't put water in it. If it does start, I've got a hose pipe handy, I'll put some in. But right now, petrol on. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I think that the throttle is automatic. Obviously I'm going to just choke it. Now remember, thumb, same side as the hand. And if it backfires or kicks or whatever, I'm not going to have a broken thumb. And we'll just wind away. Right. Now let's give it half choke. Prime it again with full choke. Ah, now, what about moving this switch into the run position? That might be a good idea on the magneto. Right. So let's go half choke. Right. Is this going to be it? Two, three. Right. Full choke. Ooh. 
Ooh. Definitely a cough. Here we go, half choke. I did see a little cough there, unless I'm imagining it. Okay, nothing happening, so just have a look at the spark plug. It's quite uh, see if it's fouled. Well it's not. So we'll just see whether any vapour comes out. I hope that isn't the valve stuck again. Let's just see whether we've got any compression. Yeah, there's a little bit of compression still. Let's right, plug back in. Now this is quite energetic work. So. Why do I put that spark plug cap? Silly me. Fuel off now because it's flooding slightly. Just uh, misplace the spark plug cap. Okay, I'm just going to turn the camera off now. Okay, just been into the workshop and had a change of heart, so I've procured a drinking straw. Placing it over the jet. Now I'm getting plenty of bubbles. Now the sun is definitely going over the top of the house, so now or never, as they say. So in goes the jet bung. Now let's think about a common sense way of starting this engine. Because of course it is going to start. So I'm going to put that back on there. Now I did say earlier I'll check the oil. You know, we don't want to seize it up. So I'm just going to quickly go around to this back. There's a, a big wing nut here. Let's have a look. Some sort of device totally caked in rubbish. And it has release. There's a washer. Okay. Well, I can confirm there is some lubricant in there. Very ancient by the smell of it, but uh, certainly enough for test purposes. So we've got oil in there. Right. Well, let's just have a think. Let's move the tools. Right. Here goes nothing. Now I haven't put water in it. If it does start, I've got a hose pipe handy, I'll put some in. But right now, petrol on. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I think that the throttle is automatic. Obviously I'm going to just choke it. Now remember, thumb, same side as the hand. And if it backfires or kicks or whatever, I'm not going to have a broken thumb, and we'll just wind away. Right. Now 
let's give it half a choke. Prime it again with full choke. Ah, now, what about moving this switch into the run position? That might be a good idea on the magneto. Right. So let's go half choke. Right. Is this going to be it? Two, three. Right. Full choke. Ooh. Definitely a cough. Here we go, half choke. We have freed off a lot of things. We've got a bit of compression. I think possibly the float is sticking a little bit sometimes, but I think that'll clean itself up. The other thing is I think the magneto is definitely not sparking properly. So what we'll probably do is come back to this and maybe take the magneto off. see what we can do about getting a better spark. So, to be continued. Thanks for looking anyway.